Good morning and welcome back to a new video. Um, I'm on the blower today so I just need to quickly swap trailers and then we'll be off. I'm also going to try a bit of the head cam video thing today um, and see how that goes. First thing I'm going to do is unhitch my trailer. It's Monday morning and normally if I knew I was taking the blower trailer I would have done this on Friday or Saturday just so that I'm not doing it when I'm fresh and clean in the dark and not knowing what the weather's going to be like and unfortunately today it is pouring down with rain. However this is a bit of a last minute job so we're just going to go with the flow. Right, break legs, auxiliary, grip pin, yes, I've done it. It's this trailer without ABS. That is because it is not attached anymore. Glass on. Right, pull away a little bit. Drop my back end. Oh, that rain's getting worse. I found the trailer I'm taking so I've just backed up to it and now I just need to hitch up. Tippers tip up using hydraulics and all of our hydraulic pipes and trailers have a screw fitting. This trailer however was bought second hand and came with a push fit fitting. You can buy adapters to make the screw and push fits compatible and there is always one kept with this trailer. Oh somebody's taken the blooming thing off. Well, this ain't no good. Well, I can't go any further yet. Someone's taking the blooming thing off. <sighs> this is ridiculous. It's absolutely emptying it down. <sighs> right. Let's see if I can find it somewhere. This is the only trailer that we have that needs this type of adapter. So in my head, I'm thinking it must be here somewhere. So I check all of the side lockers and compartments. I really don't want to make a phone call at this time in the morning, but I can't find it. So it is inevitable that I have to. We don't want non-productive hours of me just sat here waiting for a new adapter. So we come up with a plan that means I can keep going. I'm going to carry on, hitch up, do my checks and make sure that the vehicle is roadworthy. Once that's completed, I'm going to head down to the place where I'm loading. They have a weighbridge there so we can check the weight on the weighbridge rather than using my weigher on my trailer, which needs the hydraulics. The place where I'm loading isn't too far away from the yard, so somebody is going to go and look for an adapter and bring it to me. Right. Stand in the puddle one last time for good measure. Level my body. Oh, I think we are finally ready to go. I've got to where I'm loading and um, no one knows where I'm going. So I just got to wait for a bit. So this is a job where I'm basically just subbed out for the day. Um, normally I'll turn up and they know exactly where I'm going. But unfortunately today they're not really sure. So I just need to wait for somebody to come in. I find out where I'm going and then I just need to reverse under these bins on the left of your screen. 
Luckily, the rain has died down a bit, which is helpful for loading. There is a cover over me while I'm loading, but the less damp air being blown about, the better as I am loading a very powdery meal and it will stick very easily to damp surfaces. With these blowers, we only tend to transport animal feed to farms. This can come in the form of powders, meals, pellets, or raw materials like wheat, barley, soya, and beans. The chap will tell me when to stop and he will also let me know when to move forwards as I'm loading. Then it's back onto the Weybridge. They've already told me that they've only made 25 tonnes of this and I can carry 26 to make me up to my 44 tonne gross weight. So I'm pretty confident that I won't be overweight, even though I cannot check my weight with my own trailer. I get my ticket and it's time to make my way up to Welshpool, where the farm is. Oh, oh. It's not nice out there. Not nice at all. Right. I ring the office to let them know where I'm going so that they can organise getting the adapter to me. I'm actually going past the motorway junction that would take me back to the yard. But instead of me going all the way back to the yard fully loaded, they get somebody to come out and give me the adapter. Today, it was Josh that drew the short straw. Then I get as far up the road as I possibly can before I have to stop for a legally required break. Today, it happened to be frankly... And after my break, I ring the farmer to let him know I'm coming. <coughs> Hello. Hello, how are you? Yeah, good, thanks. Finish your two. I'm dropping off. I yeah. should be there about sort of half past two, if that's all right. Half past one, sorry? Half past two. Half past two. That's yeah. lovely, thank you. All right, perfect, thank you. Bye. Cheers, bye. 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 Unfortunately, I lost a bit of time this morning waiting around to find out where I was going and I also meet a bit of traffic on the way up to Welshpool around Shrewsbury so that set me back a bit as well and I managed to get up to the farm for just before three o'clock. I get up to the lane and up to the far entrance and if you look across you can just see the bins right down the bottom that I need to blow into. The only way to deliver to this farm is to reverse in. As it's on quite a narrow lane, I pull up quite far and that gives me plenty of room then to kick the trail around into the entrance of the farm. As I'm going back, I'm very aware of the trees on my near side. And as you can see, there's some silage bells there kicking out on my good side as well. When reversing an Arctic, you need to think about the whole distance that you are reversing and position the truck accordingly and not just think about getting around that first bend. Once you get into the habit of thinking ahead, it makes life so much easier for yourself. The farmer told me that he would like the first 14 tonnes in the bottom bin and the rest will go up into one of the top bins. The place I need to reverse into will come up to the right of me on the screen in just a second. And there it is and I will need to pull forwards and then blindside reverse down into that gap and blow into those bins there. I carefully manoeuvre down into the gateway where the bins are and I'm very careful because it's quite slippery here and there is not much room for error. Then I get all wrapped up and I get all the pipe work out ready to connect to the bins. I collect together all the stuff that I know that I will definitely need and then I can always add to it as I'm connecting it together. Under the back of the trailer are two valves and that determines which side you are going to blow out of. 
So I set it to blow out of my near side and I can take the cap off the end with great difficulty. Then I can connect all the bits up that I need to blow out of this side of the trailer. So first I'm putting on the adapter. Then I will screw on the bend. Now I wouldn't always use this one. In fact, I try to avoid it if I can. The best case scenario is you use as least bends and pipes as you possibly can. But in this scenario, I'm going to have to use it. Basically, the further you have to blow a load, the harder the engine has to work and the longer it takes. Next, I'm going to put on the adapter for the bins. This is basically a rubber pipe uh, with a Jubilee clip on it. So you can tighten it up really tight onto the tube that goes to the top of the bin. And it has a screw fit at the bottom to screw the pipes onto. Once both those parts are done, I can start attaching the pipes and work out how many I actually need. It looks like I'm going to need one more and I have a slightly shorter one that is going to be perfect to bridge the gap. Once all that's done and connected, I can start the engine on the trailer. So the, the trailer actually has a separate engine to the tractor unit. I will increase the revs on the engine, but unfortunately the rev gauge is broken. So I just have to gauge it by ear. Inside the trailer, there are two doors, which create three compartments within the trailer, which means you can carry three different types of feeds if you wanted to. I'm only going to unlock the door closest to the back for now as I want to keep as much weight on the front so that I can get up the hill to tip into the top bins later on. Once all that's done, I go to the control panel at the back of the trailer. I close the air valve to create pressure to be able to blow. I start the feeder and then slowly increase the air. It can take a little while to react, so it's not something that you can rush. It can take a while to get it just right, and you do this by listening to the engine and listening to how it's blowing, and also reading the gauge. There are so many factors to consider when blowing, like the type of product you've got on, how far you're blowing it, the type of bin you're blowing into, and the capability and age of the particular trailer you're using. Sometimes it can be really easy, and other times you can be stood watching the gauge through the whole process, which can sometimes take a couple of hours. I then put the body up just a little bit, just to ensure that the feed is slowly sliding down the trailer. I already know that this load might be a little bit temperamental as I know that this trailer doesn't like the powdery mill very much. On top of that, it's being blown through three pipes. So I need to be at the ready, watching, waiting and listening for any changes in the noises of the blowing. And then I can hopefully catch it before it blocks up the pipes. If the feed doesn't sound like it's going through, there is an auger that I can use at the back of the trailer just to help it along its way. Unfortunately, it did block up, but I didn't get a chance to film it as I was a bit busy. I got covered in feed, but we got there eventually and I packed up and it was time to move to the top bin. I have been to this farm a few times and on a number of occasions I've had to be pulled up the hill. The farmer knows that it's a bit tricky to get up there, so he's always on hand, ready to pull us up. The farmer knows that it's not the easiest place to get in and out of, so he keeps checking up on us to make sure we're okay, which I think is really nice. It's really hard to see in the dark and I think I need to get a better camera for the dark but I'm reversing blindsided around the trees and trying to miss the trees on my good side as I go around the corner. But we get there and I'm lined up with the bins at the top. I already know that this will blow a lot better as all I need is the two adapters and one pipe. At this point I can also open the front door of the trailer to get all of the feed out. Once I've blown this last little bit off, I will use the rest of my time to get towards my next destination. I've just popped into Telford Services for a shower and um, I thought I'd be cheeky and get straight into my pyjamas. Because on that farm, I, um, I got really wet. I got soaked through. And the stuff I'm, I was blowing into the bins was like a, a fine meal. Um, and when one of the pipes got blocked, and I sorted it out, it just like congealed on my clothes. So um, I didn't really want to put them back on. I didn't want to put new clothes back on. I thought 
I'm only going an hour down the road or so. I've just put my pyjamas on. And that's what I did. And I'm drying my clothes out there because I uh, I want them to like dry off. I don't want them in the cab all week. I mean, it's only Monday. I don't really want wet clothes hanging around. So I try and dry them out and then I can put them in me like wash bag. Right, let's get down the road. I get down to an industrial state that I know and I park up, shut the curtains and have some tea. I have a lovely chilli tonight. Well, that's me done for the day. I am parked up, my tea is on. I'm gonna have a cup of tea and then probably straight to bed. Um, I've done a 14 and a half hour day. And to be honest, I've only done seven hours 43 of actual driving. That is probably because of one, all the hold-ups, and two, generally, on the blower you do a little bit less just because you do more of the work. Um, but yeah, that's my plan for tonight, up early in the morning. So after watching this video back, I am very aware that the head cam didn't pick up as much as I would like it to have picked up. Um, maybe I should have taken some more close-up shots and stuff to show you a bit more. But I'm hoping that I can do a video just with the blower trailer on its own with no um, load with it and hopefully go inside and show you a bit of what's inside the actual trailer and all the buttons and knobs and whatever um, to give you a bit more of an insight into how it actually works if you're interested. I would also like to say a massive thank you for all the lovely comments, um, everyone who subscribed and liked all my uh, videos because I really wasn't expecting so many people to be on board with me. I thought it was just going to get lost on the internet. So yeah, thank you very much.